everybody. Welcome to Corrections, week of May 17th. You might have noticed we're trying a different title card this week where it will just say extra. And we'll see how that plays for everybody. Uh, we tried digital exclusive. We've tried online exclusive. And we're just, again, you know, we invite your feedback, or we would invite it if we thought that you were waiting for an invitation. <laughs> also, uh, let's get started. Uh, last week, I tried to land exactly at the time, the length that I said I would when we started. I said uh, 11 minutes, 28 seconds. It ended up being 11 minutes, uh, 38 seconds. I am going to try again. I think I'm going to try to be a little bit looser, uh, try to be uh, you know, less precise and give myself a window to hit. And again, this is me looking down my list, coming up with how long it will be, and trying to get in that window. So I think, based on what I'm looking at, tonight corrections will be 13 minutes and 40 seconds, plus or minus 10 seconds. OK. <laughs> Yesterday, in A Closer Look, we talked about the fact that everybody was watching during the January 6th insurrection. It was one of those events that all America was tuned into, like the OJ trial or the Apollo 13 landing. People were up in arms. They said there was no Apollo 13 landing because it never got to the moon. But you know, it did land just in the water. I know what happened. <laughs> like, that's the part that hurts my feelings. Like, it, I saw the movie, Apollo 13. I didn't, like, leave early. <laughs> I don't think the famous line is, Houston, it all went according to plan. <laughs> Send Ed Harris home. And I know we could have said, instead of landing, we could have said the Apollo 13 re-entry or splash down. I'm not, I think it's very rude to say about astronauts to use a term like splash down that sounds like a Six Flags ride. I'm not going to do that. But again, if you think, if you're watching this, you don't believe what I'm saying right now, and you think that I thought Apollo 13 landed on the moon, you got to stop watching the show. Um, oh, we talked about, we showed some clips from ITV, and then we, as an ITV announcer, introduced, uh, said, stay tuned for the show's Mock the Week and Taskmasters. And it was pointed out that Mock the Week is on BBC and Taskmasters is on Channel 4, so an ITV announcer would not introduce those shows. But we love those shows, and we wanted to give them a shout-out. And so that's not, that's not a, a mistake. That's a, we took a liberty. And uh, for our British viewers who were upset by that, uh, in America, liberty's more than just a word. <laughs> and if you understood that, we wouldn't have had to leave. <laughs> also, uh, people said, you keep calling it taskmasters, it's taskmaster. And I understand that in England, it's taskmaster, but here, it's taskmasters, because sometimes people just put an S on the end of a word like you do with maths. <laughs> I did a, uh, I talked about the word psych last week and said that uh, I was like, I am, you, I am a puppet master. And people said, that's a marionette. <laughs> okay. Also, someone said I was doing Werner Herzog. That was not. This was not. That is not Werner. That's not. Werner Herzog would be like, corrections is a massive waste of time. It is foolhardy because to be imperfect is to be human. Any effort to erase all error is to lose one's soul. With that said, I would have said splashdown. <laughs> uh, 
we had a photo of an alligator smoking a vape pen. I am aware last week we had to do a correction about a different joke that was a cockroach smoking a cigarette. And to that, I'll just say, <laughs> we like what we like. <laughs> so we had an alligator uh, smoking a vape pen, and a couple people said that's a photo of a crocodile. Yes. But here's the thing. When we do these photo shoots, we have found <laughs> that the crocodiles are easier. A crocodile just comes in and does exactly what you ask it. You're just like, we just want you to smoke the vape pen, and they're just, they do it, and they're like, is that good? And you go, yeah, you'd want to just do a fun one for yourself, and they're like, and, and they're just like in and out. Alligators, and again, this is most, I'm not being specific to all alligators, but the ones that we deal with in our industry have a ton of questions. They just show up and they're like, how do you want me to do it? And you're like, just smoke it the way you'd smoke a vape pen. And they're like, oh, they always are like, okay. Like, it's crazy. And they'll always say like, why is this supposed to be funny? And it's like, it wears us down. So we have found it's easier to just use a crocodile. Like sometimes they'll shoot Toronto for New York. We do that with crocodiles and alligators. And Lloyd, our photographer, is the one who's asked that we stop using crocodiles. He said, I may like him. I do not want to work with him. He's from Scotland, and that's how he sounds. Um, We talked about some legal troubles people have been, had in, uh, been having, excuse me, and said uh, that they pleaded guilty, and a lot of people said they pled guilty. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong. We all want it to be pled guilty. That's not what it is. It's pleaded, okay? I don't care how you do it. If you want to say plead, that's fine. You want to say pled, excuse me, that's fine. I'm certainly not going to go on your YouTube page and leave a comment. Because that's not who I am, it's who you are. But it's pleaded guilty. Right, Baze? Yeah. Yeah, it's pleaded guilty. I know. We want it to be pled guilty. It's not that. And if you want it to be that, stay out of my mentions. Because <laughs> if you're going to stick with it after I'm telling you you're wrong, then the only thing I have to say to you is, Amber, permission to say bye, Felicia? Permission granted. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> it was pointed out to me that I often say during these uh, that something is the definition of, for example, that's the definition of unfair, when what I want to say is that's the epitome of unfair. Like an example, like to call that out, is the epitome of pedantic. <laughs> we refer to the QAnon shaman as a QAnon Viking. And a lot of people pointed out he's a shaman. And I apologize. Just because someone storms the Capitol during an insurrection does not give me the right to get their costume wrong. When my wife and I were talking about this, because we kind of agreed on Santa, like we wouldn't pretend, once our kids figured it out, we wouldn't keep pretending that Santa's real. But like, when do you tell your kids QAnon's not real? Because <laughs> it's like helpful, you know? Like when they don't want to do stuff, we're like, all right, but just so you know, we'll call off, we're going to call off Q then. And there's going to be a cabal of devil-worshipping pedophiles wandering around. Eat your beans. <laughs> um, I've talked a little bit on this show about Mike Shoemaker, our producer, who calls himself 
Mikey the Shoe, and <laughs> one of the things he says, as anyone here can attest, is um, he will say, when you approach him with anything, I'm not afraid of nobody! <laughs> A bunch of people said to me, that's a double negative. I didn't say it, right? I want you to understand that. When I'm telling you what he said, it's a direct quote. So now you're giving me a correction that then I have to go tell him. Like one of the most aggressive, <laughs> irascible people. And I don't, like part of me was like, just leave it alone, right? That is not the, the remit of corrections is not to go fix everybody. It's to fix me. But I thought, all right, you know what? I'll try it. On behalf of the people that took the time to write that in, I'll go. So uh, I go to his office and I say, shoemaker. And again, his other catchphrase, who's asking? So I'm like, <laughs> you know my voice, bud. You know my voice. So I come in and I explain to him, when you say, I'm not afraid of nobody, that's a double negative. And he goes, what are you talking about? I say, what, basically what you're saying is, I'm afraid of everybody. And he said, what if that's what I meant? And I go, what? And he said, what if Mikey the shoe ain't as tough as he lets on? <laughs> what if I'm putting on a bit of a show with this tough exterior? And I said, oh, I don't. Is that true? He goes, yeah. Been true the whole time I've known you. I was like, why didn't you tell me? And he goes, you never asked. So guys, I mean, I feel terrible, right? And I say, you know, is there anything I can do for you? He said, how about a hug? Now. In July, I will have worked um, with Shoemaker for 20 years. And in that time, we've never had any physical contact. I remember, like, even when you go to shake his hand, he's just like. <laughs> and so he asked me for a hug, you know? And, um, I would not be where I am today without him. And so I go over and uh, I give him a hug. And the minute I do, uh, he just knees me in the balls. <laughs> and I hit the ground and he goes, oh, what happened? I said, what happened? You need me in the balls. And he goes, did I get both of them? And I said, yeah, you got both of me. He goes, that's a double negative. <laughs> Cut the feed. <laughs>